how is everybody? My name is Angie Morenga and you're watching Just Angie. And today, we're still going to talk about marriage. Mm. So sit back, kick back, relax, get the tea. It's a bit cold now, so get some shahi and let's talk about marriage. Today's, what I want to talk about is something that came up when I was um, speaking. Um, I think two or three times when I've been called to speak to about, to, about marriage to women. Um, I loved it. God said that uh, nobody got married at gunpoint. And I thought, wow, that's a really good statement. Yes, nobody got married at gunpoint. Everyone was willing, jumping, skipping off into destiny, you know, with love and you know, what you could do a movie eh, with a white dress and a white horse. Some of the girls with the white horse were riding off into the sunset. There was no gunpoint. And therefore, he was saying that if nobody got married at gunpoint, this was your choice. This was your choice, so you have to respect choice. You boys think about respecting choices, yeah. So if this was your choice, then we have to, you, you yourself have to respect your choice, even as we respect your choice. So I want us to reflect on that. Nobody got married by force. Nobody was forced into marriage, you know. You, you made a choice, you had a relationship, you have values, you have systems, you have things that you are looking for in, in terms of marriage, and you found them, and then you got married. There was no force, there was no pressure because I think why God was making that statement is sometimes we look like we, like somebody forced us, nobody forced you. That was your choice, you know. And I was amazed, I was listening the other day, I think it was Bishop Tilly Jakes, talking about when you're looking at leaders, look at their, their choices. I said, oh gosh, mercy for me, even me, I need mercy because some of my choices have not been excellent choices. But I think it's important, even if you're a young person there watching that, that you know, when you're choosing there, they were talking about choosing a leadership team and that when you're putting a team together, that you have to look at the choices that those leaders have made in the past, you know, to put together a, a, a team. Are they good at making choices? So this is one choice that God is saying. You know, we, we act in marriage like, especially when the marriage is not going right, like we got married at gunpoint. Nobody forced you to get married. You're the one who got married. Okay, you know, whatever it was, whatever, we are older, wiser, more knowledgeable, the things I know now, if I knew now, if I knew now what I knew then, I think they say, oh, what I do then, what I do, I don't know. But whatever I know, whatever I know now, maybe my choice would have been different, my decision would have been different. But still, you made that choice. And therefore, we have to stop, you know. Um, I'm always seeing God look at like this horrified face of, oh my goodness, how did I get here? Yeah, you made the choice. You made the choice and you got married. And you got into that bed and now you just want to exit. You can't just exit. You know, there has to be a way, there has to be a thinking behind what are we doing, how is it that we grew apart, you know, there has to be perseverance, you know that word in the Bible comes and you know, we want to pick and choose which words we want to stay with and which ones we don't want, and we don't like perseverance, you know, we don't like that, that we have to persevere things and they, they produce maturity, they produce character, you know. I keep saying for real, for real, for real, and that's for real. You know that I was thinking maybe people think I regret, oh, I don't know, I don't want to look like regret, but for real, I should have stayed married. There was no reason for me to take off. I should have stayed there. There was no point when I look back now. And you know when I know now, and I keep telling you, I wish, you know now I'm going to be 50, 52 next year, but you know, if you could go back, guys, if, God, if you could learn all these things, then God says, okay, chance number two, back to 20 years and live life again and make very different choices and live a very different life and i know you would too there's no one who wouldn't why because we learn things you know it's sometimes when you're when you're when i see girls saying at you know if he does that i don't know i will do this mm. you will see the older women look at you and you should look at their faces when you're doing that they are looking at you like hmm? please eh? life is coming please don't talk loudly life is coming Life is coming. Life, life can hurt. Will, will, will send you curveballs. Life will. I don't know. Things comes into life that you wonder. Will I, you say I can never go through that? It comes. You do. It comes. You do. You know. You overcome hurdles and obstacles as you engage in life, and maybe things that you said never ever to or were speaking without. I don't know whether it is without wisdom, without experience. That's the one. Without experience, things you are speaking about without experience, they come and then my goodness. There's a humility that, that getting older and experiencing life gives you and should give you that probably we don't have when we're younger because you don't understand that life happens, you know? There's a lot out there, you know? There's so many things where I sit and I reflect in my life, you know, that I think, gosh, I should have this, I could have done this better. This is what I should have done. You know, like one of the things I wish I had had more children. My friend Naomi is always making fun of me, but I wish I'd had more children, you know? I love out there, but I wish I had more, you know? And then it's like sometimes when you're younger, it's like you're, you're not, you're not um, 
cognizant of the fact that life is moving. Therefore, you need to, if you need to have your four children, just have them. You know, you have reasons why, oh, uh, maybe there will be no provision. No, God provides for every child. Every child is a gift from God and he will provide for that child. Where were we again? No one got married at that point. It was not forced. So reflect on that statement. You know, I feel like write, write a composition, you know. Reflect on that statement. You, you were not forced to get married. You chose to get married. And then I, we lose sight of why did you make that choice. Something advised your choices. So sit back and reflect upon those choices. What is it that made you choose this spouse? What is it that made you say, this is the person I'm going to do to my parents, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with, I'm taking to my pastor, I'm taking to church. What was it? Sit back and reflect on those things. Because I think that's why the Bible says, I think in Philippians, that whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, reflect on those things first before we see what is wrong. I mean, even if it was the, the English thing that says, every cloud has a silver lining, let's examine the silver lining first. Before we examine the cloud, let's examine the silver lining. And I remember also picking up a book um, by Stormy O'Marshall. I think the power, for me it was, she's written other books like The Power of the Praying Wife. I haven't read those ones. But she wrote about just enough light for the step I'm on. And maybe when I was flipping through that power of a praying wife, you know, she was talking about the choices that we make that now, they seem now to be dim in light of circumstances. So you need to sort of dig deep and find out what is it that advised this choice, you know? What, what made me choose this spouse? What was the vision? Because we lose sight of the vision and the, and the strategy when turmoil and trouble comes. Or when all of a sudden I'm not happy about this relationship, you know? Then, you know, I, I, I don't know. What, what can you do to, to, to make you happy? The, you know what I'm trying to say is the choice cannot always be just to leave. Or even if we don't even leave physically, just to exit. I'll exit, you know, physically. I'll not be here. I'll not be present. I'll not try. And I don't know, there's something on the human perspective. When we do that, there's such a disconnection. We'll just stop talking to each other. No, we have to talk to each other. How long do you let a, a cold war go on for? You can't. And just because it's not working doesn't mean it has to be left. Is that what we're going to say? That everything that doesn't work, we leave? I've just thought, if we have children that are not completely according to the world, way the way they are, do you leave them? You can't leave them. And that's why God always brings up this point. He always amazes me. Every time I'm speaking, you know when I'm speaking and when I go to speak on marriage, it, the best thing about those speaking engagements is, first of all, the way that I flow. You know, I will say, God, please, what is the message? Give me three points. Give me a scripture. There's one, as I was driving to the parking, I was like, God, please, eh? who are serious? What is the subject? He said, just go. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to speak through you. And you know, those are always the best, best deliveries that I do. The best. The best is when I just pray and say, God, please. Be serious. He says, Am I the one who invited you? Yes. Are these my people? Yes. Do I have the messenger? Are you the vessel? Yes. Then start and be the vessel. Okay. And but sometimes I'm like, gosh, you better have a message, Lord. But when I start speaking, it just flows. And it's exactly what they needed. And I find those are my best deliveries. But you know, sometimes now I have to bring in logic. This is the problem with logic. I say, you know what, Lord, those are people. They have paid for this ticket. I am going there. I'm representing you. What's the subject? Three points. Give me three points. He's <laughs> looking at me. Three points. And then at least he knows he's sufficiently trained where I don't make a milestone. And I've watched, I remember I was watching um, Dr. Jasmine Scalak and she said how when she went to this church. And I love her. And I love, you see, I'm so happy that we get lessons. That's why we do these videos. Because these videos are lessons for you as well. So this video, the videos I watched, they are just lessons. So she got to this church and she had been trying to get into that, preach in that mega church. She was like, this is it, my moment. Hey, so the suit is out, the shoes are out. You know, she likes red bottoms. Hey. Gotcha. So she went. So she had the message. So she's sitting waiting. God tells her, that is not the message. She's like, what do you mean? God tells her, that is not the message. This is the message I wanted to preach. And she's like, what? It, uh, this is my moment. I have been preparing, studying. I have studied no scriptures for year 5,000. I have, this is the message I'm delivering. And I love it. I was laughing. So when she got up, God told her, me, I'm sitting in your chair. You know, I love God. I don't know why you guys don't react with God the way I do. God said, now, you, you panda, me now, I'm sitting here watching you because I'm not with you. Eh? You know, it reminds me of Ichabod, the glory departed. Yeah, God said, me, I'm taking a back seat. Let's see. 
and she fell flat on her face with her someone that she thought because it came from preparation and study so you know what i'm trying to say is i by god's grace i don't do that and i've listened to enough people to hear no i mean i think even this last year at uh, bishop tdj's conference there was a guy who was closing he's a serious bishop even him he was arguing with god like never you can't do this to me you know because bishop tdj is a great orator of the word i mean you can't god is changing the sum he's on the stage city is the next speaker and god is saying no that's not the message the message you really wonder please can he change the message three days before but no but the moral of the story is and that's why let me just also say this that's why a lot of the holy spirit is missing even in our churches because we have a rigid program this is the someone this is the someone series these are the scriptures these are the songs hey the holy spirit has nowhere to move he has to move he, he can change somebody can you know I, I, i've told you i think here before when i'm doing these videos that sometimes we can do an event which always horrifies me for one person one person so in that room there is one person who needs to hear this message and you said that i think that god knows that i've also understood you can have a room of 100 women or 120 and god is after 20 not after the hundred the hundred will listen and shake their heads disagree agree whatever even in the videos some people are watching they can't stand me they are hating me they are saying this too bad so do you i don't know marry talk more sorts of rubbish but there's one person who's going to watch this video or two people or ten people they're gonna get it and they're gonna turn it on and that's why god does things so when i'm walking so there's no message just told me any message no scripture i remember one meeting i walked in so when i got there is when i was looking for a bible i said where's the bible because now i got one scripture from there it flowed and that's where the message about gunpoint came like three or four of these marriages that i've that i've been able to talk about talk to talk at that story keep coming up about gunpoint but what i'm saying is that so you flow because god knows who's in the audience he knows who needs to hear what he needs to come and tell your story and then he needs to tell you did you get my that gunpoint which is a very good a uh, question who got married at gunpoint i mean you know me i want to do, do a research you know i've got many things i want to think about but people even arranged marriages work why do they work they work there was no love before they didn't know each other there was no choice they were even given choices they were told this is the person which might move and they work why because that's another video i want to do it's about choices you can choose your behavior You the one who got married, you're the one who called everyone here. You're the one who decided to marry this person. So, first what I'm trying to say is work on 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 the why. Let's revisit the reason why. Let's revisit what we can do to fix whatever is uh, is breaking or broken. Let's figure out how we can ride this storm and ride this wave and ride this season positively. Positively. Not negatively. And also I want to say this as i dropped in my spirit there's also a pattern i'm noticing where people are separating and i would think and hope and pray that the separation would be to try and work on the marriage not to go out and live with other people or have other affairs or you know you know now engage in a different life so that's not the point the point of times of separation is let me think through this you think through this let's try to come back together but when you begin now to invite other parties and into the your uh, or try to have relationships or street tries it now you're messing things up and for me foundations are very important very very important so even the reason for the separation is to become clear and what will you will you be doing that separation maybe if, if possible don't separate don't separate and I'll do another video so but you have to think about your children you know we were saying and I said that I think in several of these meetings that we used to, our parents say we stay together because of the children and we think for some reason that that's a weak answer or that's not right it's actually very right it's okay at least the children get to be with two parents but now what needs to happen is the healing between the parents the not fighting between the parents and even if you don't fight in front of your children this they are spiritual beings they know so just try to be good people get married good why did we get married investigate that how can we make this work how can we do the best by our children what's going to be best for them it's important because in marriage and even in purpose we tell you get your eyes off yourself remove them from self that's why john 12 24 says unless a seed of wheat falls to the ground and dies it cannot produce so of course in marriage there's a lot of dying to self in leadership in fathering people mentoring coaching raising people there's a lot of dying to self in purpose all things purpose there's death to self because you're not doing what you want to do 
you're doing this on behalf of other people therefore you have to make sacrifices and then they can't even pay you or even acknowledge you for those sacrifices that you're making this is your call with God so it's the same thing with marriage we've got to go back to the why did we get married and stick to it and make it work you know the bible says once you have done all things to stand then stand so the only way you can walk away from your marriage is if you can stand before God and before man and say I have done all I have given it my best I have investigated every avenue and sometimes I better end this now the the avenue could be just to be still and to be quiet first stop talking stop giving feedback stop uh, saying how hurt you are stop raising your emotions chill first chill and I always say this so I'll close by saying this never make a marital decision when you're angry or when your emotions are up or when you're hurt let the emotions subside and then make a decision so remember you didn't get married at gunpoint god bless you my name is angie morenda and you're watching just angie bye